the Federal Reserve, the US central bank, the most important central bank in the world, kept interest rates on hold last night. That gives the Bank of England a kind of cue, if you like. We've had 14 interest rate rises since December 2001. Actually, let's have a look at a, a little graph here. You can see the history like your of interest rates. I do like a graph. Um, <laughs> here we see from 2017, interest rates were very, very low. Uh, and then we had the COVID pandemic when they went all the way down to a quarter of a percent. And since then, we've had that staircase on the right of 14 interest rate rises. And we're now at 5.25 percent. Last month, we kept interest rates at 5.25 percent, or at least the Bank of England did. Uh, and I think this month they'll do the same. So there'll be a sense now that interest rates have peaked it may be that there's an energy price spike this winter and the Bank of England puts interest rates up some more. But I do think this will help the housing market if you want to see house prices stabilise or go mm. up a bit. Mm. I know a lot of youngsters want to see house prices crash so they've got more chance to buy a house. But bad news for savers, if you like. Savers are getting a bit more money, a bit more return on their savings now. But I don't think we're going to see an interest rate rise today. I think we're going to stay where we are. Quite useful. And when you think about the election, Liam, interest rates going up, savers getting more money, that's going to be the grey vote because they've often got a lot of money in the building side of your bank, which could help the Tories. That may help the Tories, Andrew, but um, the reality is while banks and mortgage companies instantly put your very yeah, high mortgage up, when the Bank of England puts the it's interest rate up, the other way, aren't they? they often don't pass on the rate rising. How rise are they allowed to get to away with that? Because the regulators are all out to lunch or working from home or asleep at the wheel. You know, these massive ranks of civil servants we pay for, they don't get on the bank's case. It's as simple as that. And the banks know they can get away with it mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, there's just a, a lack of kind of administrative grip going on here. But why are interest rates... Uh, on hold. The main reason is because inflation has been coming down. Let's have a look at some inflation numbers here. We'll see that uh, back last year, in inflation peaked in this country at 11.1%. That's pretty high mm. by international standards. That was in October 2022. So that means in October 2022, the basket of goods was 11.1% more expensive than in October 2021. GB News viewers can see that the in Inflation rate has come down. It hasn't come down in a straight line. It hovered around 10% for four or five months. Then it hovered around 8%, 9% for a couple of months. And in the last three months, it's been 6.8, 6.7, and then 6.7% in, um, uh, uh, October, sorry, in September. The October number comes out in a couple of weeks' time. That's still high. Mm. That's still more than three times the 2% target. But the October number, when it comes out later this month, will be lower because the off-gem energy price cap has come down a fair bit because uh, food prices or food price inflation is starting to ease. Prices Even are still, still going high. up, but they're going up by less. Mm. And I think the real reason, if I was on the Monetary Policy Committee, huh, chance would be a fine thing, that, that ship's probably sailed. Um, they're idiots, Liam. It's, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> they can't afford me. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you have... Um, if you look at the GDP numbers, the latest GDP numbers, the economy is sort of flatlining here in the UK. But if you look at what I often report on GB News, the, the preliminary kind of survey numbers of the economy, they're called the PMI numbers, the Purchasing Managing Index numbers. The UK economy is contracting, Andrew and Bev, and it has been for the mm. last two or three months. It hasn't been picked up in the official figures yet, but it is in the PMI figures. And they are surveys of business leaders about what's actually going on. They are the really up-to-date numbers. So you've got the PMI numbers showing that the economy is now contracting. But why is it contracting? It's contracting because we've had 14 interest rate That's rises. Right, yeah. It's contracting because we've got a lot of geopolitical angst. It's contracting because consumers are scared mm. that fuel prices are going to spike so again spending. this winter. I mean, the public's always ahead of the political mm. and media class, always. People know in their bones we're not through the bad stuff. They know that, even if interest rates stay where they are today. So they're not spending the way they were. They're not borrowing the way they were. Demand for bank credit is contracting. The supply of bank credit is contracting. You know, mortgages are very, very low. We've seen a lot of insolvencies yesterday. Quite astonishing numbers. It sounds boring, doesn't it? But behind almost every insolvency, Andrew and Bev, there's a family, there's a business, yeah. there are hopes and dreams, mm. there are difficult relationships, there's people you know, thwarted because they can't get their business off the ground and their business folds. Insolvencies in the first nine months of this year were 13% up on insolvencies 
in the same nine-month period last year, the highest number of insolvencies in a nine-month period since the Lehman collapse in 2008-9. So the economy is constricting now. These 14 interest rate rises are now starting to really do their worst, Mm -hmm. bearing down on inflation, crushing enterprise in order to get inflation out of the system. Another interest rate rise now would be, in my view, deeply counterproductive. The economy is already on the verge of recession. The U.S. has shown that you can get your arms around inflation. Inflation in the U.S. is now well below 4%. Yeah. And the U.S. economy is growing. It helps to be the biggest economy in the world. But you can achieve that soft landing. The Bank of England needs to hold its nerve now and not raise interest rates. The trouble is Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, didn't he actually say, go on record as saying, actually a recession may be the price Mm. worth paying to tame inflation? I think when Chancellor Norman Lamont famously said, yeah. said the same thing in he retrospect, did. didn't he, in the, early, yeah. in the early 90s. I think when Chancellors say that, what they're trying to do is they're trying to signal to financial markets that they are not going to stop the Bank of England doing what they need to do. If the right. Bank of England feels that they need to raise interest rates again to really push this inflation out, out of the system. Look, the Bank of England was so slow to start raising interest mm. rates. They'll say, oh, we were the first. Yeah, but everyone was slow. And the danger is now that they overcompensate by raising too far and keeping interest rates high for too long in order to sort of make up for the fact mm. that they were sl- so slow to get on top if of inflation in the first place. If you had to get out your crystal ball, Liam, and mm. say when would be a good time for Rishi Sunak to call a general election in relation to what will happen in the economy, when would that be? Well, this is a really difficult thing. I do think inflation is going to come down quite sharply now for the rest of the year. And if that happens, I do think growth will get going. Uh, the UK economy is pretty resilient. I think we need to solve energy prices, though. That's the thing. If you have a kind of geopolitical whiz-bang this summer, if through some combination of the OPEC energy oil exporters cartel, you know, the UK mm-hmm. hasn't got much gas storage, if the Russians really decide to put the squeeze on global uh, gas supplies, they're still selling a lot of gas around the world. If you have, uh, heaven forbid, a conflagration, a real escalation of violence in the Middle East, which leads to Mm. you know a big energy price spike, then I would say the UK is pretty exposed because we are an oil importer, because we do don't have much gas storage. Which would mean, therefore, Rishi Sunak pushing a general election further and further 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 away into 2024. So rather than May, which is what it's speculated to be, first week of May, you might be looking at October next year. That's right. That's right. So what happens this winter will determine. In my view, whether or not it's a May or an October yeah. election, if we get smoothly through this winter yeah. in they terms of energy prices, go. they might go for May. If we don't get smoothly through this winter, mm. they'll go for more time for the economy to recover yeah. and it'll probably be October. And there's another factor here, of course, Liam. If, if, they, don't, if they go in October and then we have a, long, a mild summer and hundreds of boats cross the channel. That's it. He's failed on that key That's it. It's, to it's, stop it's, the boats. It's, it's four-dimensional chess, yeah. isn't it? But... Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, But in the end, you know, when the election is, these are political parlour games. That It's it's important, obviously, and and financial markets are watching and so on. But in the end, what do people really care about? What people care about is cost of living, Mm -hmm. interest rates. I would say the cost of living crisis now is starting to ease. I do think inflation is going to come down quite sharply. Mm -hmm. I do think interest rates are going to be held today. But there is that big proviso. If geopolitics gets a lot worse, then... All those predictions, I'm afraid, are out the window. Okay, great. Thanks, Liam. So you'll be bringing us that interest rate.